Piston Fanatic. I'm your host, Dave Dalton, and I'm excited to share my passion and perspective of our Detroit Pistons as we go on this fantastic voyage together. I've been a diehard Piston fan since the days of Dave Bing and Bob Lanier. I've also been the varsity basketball coach of a very successful program in northern Michigan. I want to thank you all for listening. Please subscribe. Today we're going to go over the trade deadline, and we're going to break things down a little bit. We're going to talk about Quentin Grimes and Simona Fantecchio. And we're going to talk about future rotations or what it's going to look like now that we got all these new players. Um, anyway, let's get at it. First thing I want to do is break, uh, talk about the biggest takeaways. And my biggest takeaway, number one, is that we added Quentin Grimes and Simona Fantecchio. So these guys are not just guys that we traded. We, we got a whole bunch of guys in these trades. And most of them are going to be with us for the rest of this year and probably not after this year. They're pro they're, none of them are on um, long-term contracts. And so some of them have some team options where we could keep them if we wanted to for one more year. But anyway, Grimes and Pentecchio are the real deal. And they're just what we needed. We got better. And they're, you know, Grimes is 23. Pentecchio is only 28. But they both can play defense and shoot the three. And we have just needed those two things to build around our young players, our young core, and these are guys that are going to fit, and I'm very confident we're going to be able to sign them and extend them for a reasonable amount, very reasonable amount, and so it's not going to be, you know, big hits, and so, you know, there's bigger trades, you know, people talked about, and we could have maybe got um, Levine, there was big talk about that, and people were so... Um, frustrated with our losing streak and man we got to do anything we can to make a desperate move and and just think there was talk back in December about trading Ivy for Levine and that's what the Chicago Bulls wanted and now look at how Ivy's played since he's got to start since Monty started to let him free and and then how you know it's just a whole Levine's been hurt and injured and nobody ended up wanting him and so if we would have pulled the trigger quicker that would have been a nightmare even Jonte Murray, so he's a good player. I like him a lot, but we would have had to trade Ivy. And is Ivy any better than he is? Ivy might be better than he is. And so and he's younger, he's cheaper, and you know we got control of him for a lot longer. So I'm so glad that we didn't trade for Murray either. So those are things that, you know, sometimes the best trades you make are ones that you don't make. But the trade deadline was interesting this year. There were all these teams. I was I was convinced that there was going to be more activity, not necessarily. The Pistons had a lot of activity, but we were the most active team. But the Lakers, they were desperate for, to get new players and to add. They, they got LeBron James at 39 years old, and their timeline is now. And they are about a little over 500, maybe. And so they needed to improve, but they didn't. And it just was hard to make moves. And the same thing with the Bulls. They thought, the Bulls need to break down. They're they're in no man's land. They're you know they're like around the tenth or ninth seed, and so you know you're just gonna lose in the play in, you know in the play playoff games right away. You're gonna lose you know in the play in games. Sorry, and they're they're just you know going nowhere. And so everybody's confused about them, but they didn't make any moves. And then the Hawks, they have all these players that they have that they are you know they came out and said the only um, Jalen Johnson and um, Trey Young are the only two players that aren't for trade. Uh, everybody else is on the block. And so they made no moves, though. And they have lots of salary and that they thought they were going to try to cut some of that. And they have some redundant players, but they didn't make any moves. You know, so there are a lot, a lot of teams. You know, the Warriors, everybody thought, you know, Steph, Steph's getting old. And, and he the time is now. And they made no moves. So anyway, it was just hard. And then, you know, we wanted... And I wanted, you've heard me on this podcast say that I wanted the New York Knicks. I wanted that trade. I wanted Grimes and the, uh, the first round pick that we owe that go, is going to the Knicks so that we can trade future first round picks. So as long as they have that pick, we can't until like 2029, we can make that trade. And we can trade our first round pick after the draft. So if we draft a player for another team, then we can do that. But anyway, it just limits us and... You know, there was no reason that that's not a good pick for anybody else. And so I was sure we would be able to get it, but the Knicks were stubborn. But the thing is, nobody's been trading first round picks. So last year, the only four, um, four first round picks were traded for Kevin Durant. And then there were only three other first round picks traded the whole year. And then this year, three first round picks, which were bad first round picks, they're all going to be like in the 20s, were traded for Siakam. And then a real late first round pick was traded for Kelly Olynyk and another young player from 
uh, the Jazz, and then a first round, late first round pick was traded for Terry Rozier, and one for PJ Wash PJ Washington. So the, people weren't trading first round picks, and they haven't for the last two years really. And so again, I, I we all wanted that, but the bottom line is we got the two best players that we could have ever gotten in this. Uh, trade deadline. If you look at all the players that we could have gotten, we could have got, oh, if we got Siakam, what good would that have done? We would have traded away assets and they wouldn't have done us any good because he wouldn't resign with Detroit. He wasn't going to resign with Detroit. So, you know, he probably going to sign with Indiana, but they gave away three late first round draft picks. And then the same thing um, can be said for OG on Nobi. So I would have liked OG on our team. He would have been a great fit. 26 years old, great, he's a real good three point shooter. And real good defender, and but he wasn't going to resign with us. So he has connections to the Knicks, ties to the Knicks, and so they had to have known the Knicks before they traded away Quigley and R.J. Barrett that they were going to get um, be able to sign resign him. And the Knicks have done really well with him, but we weren't going to get him. So they're the best two players that we could have gotten. And even Sam Bassini, who does um, he he's a really good has a really good podcast. He follows the NBA game theory podcast he has, and he scouts NBA players. He follows the NBA real close. He said he feels like Detroit got the best asset that was traded at the trade deadline, and so that's not counting the tra you know say Siakam and I don't even know he didn't get traded at the trade deadline. But anyway, he thinks that Burks Bogey was the best player, but um, Grimes was the best asset that was received during the, that trade deadline. So we got him. So if you looked at that trade, and I I would have been happy if we would have got two second round picks for Burks. So we sort of did. And I would have been happy, even though I wanted that first round pick, if I were, if somebody were to say to me, you can have Quentin Grimes for Bogey, I would have taken him. So Bogey is, again, he's under a good contract. I love watching him play, but he can't play a lick of defense. And he's going to be 35 at the end of the year, and he's going to be 36. And then, you know, are we going to keep him? But we have 23-year-old Quentin Grimes, who's uh, one of the best defender guard, defending guards in the NBA, and we got him at 23, and we have control of his contract because he's a restricted free agent. So, I mean, that I, I'm thrilled beyond measure that we got those two guys in Fontecchio. He's 28, but he's only played two years in the NBA. He, you know, we got to see him play and he, against, um, against the Clippers and he looked fabulous. You know, he's going to be able to shoot the three. He can defend, he can run the floor, he can handle the ball some and he can rebound. He, he had nine rebounds for us in 32 minutes. He's, I think he's the real deal. And so we're going to talk about those two guys, especially, and about what their teams, what people who follow their team daily think of those two guys. So Anyway, that's excited, exciting for me. But um, yeah, you know, we had those guys, Cade, Duran, Ivy, Asar, Fantecchio. They played only 10 minutes together, but they were plus 15 against the Clippers when those guys played together. And I can, I like that lineup, man. I, I'm excited. I can't wait to see all this team. I am so excited for our team where, you know, we won four of our last eight games. And that game with the Clippers, you know, we had, you know, we, Faltered down the stretch like we have so many times this year, but we we were ahead most of the game and we gave them a good battle and they have four Hall of Famers, but we we I'm excited for our team, as you can tell. So um like I said, I think we got two really good players, but the the next take on the, the trade deadline though, that's very significant and real important, and Gore said it, he said we needed to let the young guys fly free. And you know, unless until we got rid of uh, Killian and Livers and Knox and Bogey and Burks, those guys weren't going to be able to fly, fall free, fly free. So the problem with, you know, Killian and Knox and Livers is that Monty was going to play them ahead of uh, Ivy and Asar he had been all year. And so they weren't going to get to play as much and they weren't going to be able to do as much. And even Bogey and Burks, I love watching them play. They're really good, but they took a lot of shots and they're not, they're long, not long-term players for us. And so they kind of dominated the ball. So that kind of stunts the growth of, of our players. So, you know, getting rid of them. And you know, again, we weren't going to be able to, you know, if we resigned Burks, it was going to cost quite a bit of money. And he's, he's getting older, like all of us every day, but he was already 32 or older. So um, Grimes is, 
he has a knee injury. He had the knee, his knee was injured, but it's nothing serious. But it was, he's been out, he had been out for a week or two before the trade deadline even. So he's not going to come back until the, he could come back to the Laker game Tuesday. And then we'll play the Suns on Thursday. Then there's the All-Star break. So I wouldn't be surprised if they held him out and let him come back after the All-Star break. But he could, might play, who knows. If he's 100% healthy, let him play. But I, I can't wait to watch him play. So he's, he again, he's, can really shoot it and he can really defend and so um, he's this past year this this season he played in 45 games and he scored 7.3 points a game but he was not playing he was playing like 20 some minutes a game so you know that's deceptive when you only scored that many points but his his percentages have dropped a little bit this year so that's part of the reason they traded him and he's a great shooter he's got a beautiful stroke and he he hits tough shots he doesn't you know again i've talked before about this we have guys on our team that get wide open threes because people don't guard him even Stu and asar they don't guard they didn't guard killian there's guys that even make threes sometimes but people you know Stu's not shooting that bad of a percentage but they still don't guard him but um grimes can hit him grimes can hit him with people right in his face so they really even even at times when he, you know they're going to have to respect him, so they're they're going to have to they're not going to be able to sag and help on him. So, but uh, last year, you know he averaged um, thirty minutes a game, shot forty seven percent from the floor, thirty nine percent on threes, seventy nine percent on free throws, and so he you know that's who he really was. And this year he got limited. The Knicks they got Dante DiVincenzo. And he has been shooting the lights out. He has been just unbelievable. He's a good defender, and he's shooting 46% from the floor, but 42% on threes, and he's been even hotter than that lately. So and they have Josh Hart, and they, they just have a lot of guards. And so he he wasn't going to get to play, and they needed to bluster their scoring on, from their bench. And so when they got the chance to get uh, versatile players like Bogey that can play multiple positions, that can score the ball from their bench, and they, they just weren't going to play, there just weren't going to be minutes. So even if they kept um, Grimes, they weren't, you know, if they got Bogey and Burks and didn't trade away Grimes, they weren't going to have minutes for him. So their losses are gained. So I'm thrilled. But here's the thing that the Knicks, and I know the Knicks know this, obviously, but the Knicks were 20 points better last season with Grimes on the court than with him off the court per 100 possession, per 100 possessions. So he, you know, he is a big difference maker. And um, the people from New York that follow the team daily said he's about all the right stuff. And he said it's really tough for the Knicks to lose him. And it's heartbreaking, they, they said. It's just heartbreaking for them to lose him. But he was just an elite defender. And, I mean, they even just marveled at the way he gets over screens and sticks on guys. They said he's the guy that you want guarding um, Damian Lillard and Mitchell and Brunson and those guys that lit us up and Levine even. And, you know, we have a star that can guard him, but Monty didn't put him on him for whatever reasons. And a lot of those games, Monty wasn't playing a star very many minutes. But now we have two guys. We have two of the best defenders in the NBA. And so I'm thrilled for that. And that, you know, it's just going to make our defense so much better. And um, Pantechio is a good defender. And they, they're, they're guys from uh, the Jazz said that he was one of their defensive stoppers. If they had somebody that they needed to stop, you know, he, again, he's, he's a... Real good defender. He's not elite, though. Hart, um, Grimes is an elite defender. So, uh, anyway, I'm just thrilled that we were able to get him. So, um, the people from New York, again, they said that he's absolutely a piece of what you want on a contending title, a team that's contending for a title. He said he's that good. And um, he's only owed $2.3 million this year and $4.2 million next year. We can extend him this year, at the end of this year, or we can let him go the next year into restricted free agency. And the same thing um, this year, though, we don't have another extra year for Fontecchio, but both those guys, teams know the Pistons have lots of cap space. So they teams don't even usually, it's very seldom that teams sign, offer restricted free agents offer sheets. It does, it, it's happened so few times in, that I've ever observed. And so, they, and when they know that Detroit is probably going to match, and they're, so they're, there's not likely that somebody's even going to offer them. And so we should get them, hopefully at a fair and reasonable price, but it's not going to be this exorbitant price that's going to crash our 
uh, cap space. So they're young, they're good, they're ascending players. They're they're going to be cheaper because I think they're going to be playing better in the future. So we're really we're really lucky. I just but I think that you're going to love watching Grimes play. The challenge for him is he's going to be one of our best players. I believe that he's that good, and so I think that you know we have Cade and Ivy that are our two best players arguably, and they're guards, and so so is he. So it's going to be a challenge for Monty. But, yeah, they, they the people in New York are, feel real bad about him leaving. They love him. The people in New York, they just raved about what a great person he is and how tough he is. And and I know that he wrote a really cool thing on Twitter to the Knicks fans that he appreciated playing there. But I heard him interviewed by James Edwards, and he is excited to be here. And he – people – you know, they could say things, and I guess anybody that got traded would say they that like they like the locker room, but he, you know, he knows Sasser, they played in college together, and anybody that played at Houston is tough. Their coach, uh, Calvin Sampson, is tough, and they play tough defense, and so they were teammates there when at least for one year, and so they're excited to, um, and Sasser called him right away after he found out that we got him, so... Yeah, you're going to love him. So Pantechio is the people from the Jazz said that he's had a fabulous year. You know, he struggled a little bit last year. It was his first year in the United States and first year in the NBA. He comes over from Italy and he brings his wife and his little girl and his wife hardly knows any English. And so it was challenging. And then this year things were better and he played really well. And he he started like 34 of their 50 games, the last 34. And they said he's had a fabulous year. He's just terrific. And they were sure that some um, high-level team was going to come in and try to get him. And they were sure that the, he was going to be in big demand. They, they said that of all the players on their team, they thought that would be in the most demand would be him ex um, except for Marketing. They thought Marketing would be number one and that Pontecchio would be number two. So we're lucky we got him. And you know, I'm, he's excited to be here too, and he likes our team. And so he played really well that first game, but he um, – so they sell, they also said the Jazz. So why did the Jazz trade him? You know, we talked before about they have a log jam at the forward position and they're bigs. You know, they have that Taylor Hendricks that they drafted that I loved, and he's got he's they had to make playing time for him because John Collins is there, Markkinen's there, Kessler plays up front. They just have a lot of big players. Plus, they want to sign Markkinen to an extension, a max extension probably, and so they have to, you know, that they, they were worried about signing Pontecchio. And here's what happened. There, this is from the guys from the Jazz that follow him on a daily basis. They said the Jazz got nervous that the Pistons called about him, to, wanting to inquire in about trading for him. And so what they knew is Detroit likes him. And so they have lots of money. They have at least $47 million in cap space, so they can offer him to a big offer sheet, and we're not going to want to match if we want to sign market. And so they said, well, we might as well get a high second-round draft pick for, or get something for him instead of just losing him by re-signing with the Pistons, by signing with the Pistons. So that's kind of what went into all of that. So that's, you know, pretty interesting. But again, he's a, a rising player. I think we're going to be able to sign him to like a four-year extension. It's going to be right in his prime. He's versatile. He can play defense and shoot the three, like I said. They, they said he's a defensive stopper. And he's... Excited about uh, the way that his family's been treated and that they're supporting him and his family. So, yeah, he's he's going to be good. And the other player, you know, we got these guys from the Knicks. Like, we got Malachi Flynn, and he showed some promise. And he was a, a high first-round draft pick, I think. But he's only 6'1". We don't need another little guard. We have too many guards, and then we have Sasser. So we're there's no way unless – Somebody gets hurt that we are going to want Malachi Flynn, but his contract expires at the end of this year. Um, Evan Fournier has a, been a really good scorer, really good shooter in the NBA for years. He's averaged 14 points for his career. He shoots 44% and 38% on threes for his career, but he can't play defense. I don't know if he's worse than Bogey or not. I haven't watched him play closely enough to know that, but you know he couldn't play, even get on the court for the Knicks, even though... He could really light it up, and I know he had he's had some spot games where they needed him to play, and he scored really high. But uh, Shake Milton, he's a decent, good NBA player, but I just don't see he's a guard, and his shooting has been inconsistent. But obviously, if somebody gets hurt, so he's on a roster, but his contract expires. So, well, actually, I think he might have a 
a team option for one more year. But um, the one guy that I think that we could end up keeping, there's I think there's a good chance would be Troy Brown Jr. He's but he's he's only six six. I would love it if he was that did what he does and he was six ten. But he's six six and he's so he's small four. But uh, he, there's a team option for four million. So that's a cheap price to keep a quality player. He can defend. You got to see a little bit of that, you know, against the Clippers. And he, he made his first two threes and then he, he didn't hit the rim on the next two, but he has, um, he's been a good shooter throughout his career. So, you know, he's, I think a good player that we might want to keep. He's still young. He's only 24 years old and he shoots 43%, 36% on threes. But again, he can defend. So you can never have too many small forwards or too many wings. So we've been, without any wings really for the last year or so, or last four years maybe. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the rotation. So this is gonna be challenging. So, you know, I, I've been critical of Monty and I'm so glad that we got rid of those guys so he can't play them again. But we still now have, with all these trades, we I hope he doesn't try to play too many guys because what he has to prioritize is arcade, Ivy, Duran, Asar, Patekio, Grimes, Stu, and Sasser. That's eight guys. Really, I liked a nine-man rotation in the NBA because, again, you can't give guys, you know, if you give one guy nine minutes and one guy 12 minutes and stuff, nobody gets in a rhythm. Nobody gets to get any confidence or get anything going. So we need to prioritize those guys. And then maybe you could throw in Trey Brown Jr. And then maybe you got a Muscala or um, Weissman or whoever we could throw in there. But those guys need to play the bulk of the minutes, those eight players. So what I think Monty's going to do, if I had to bet, is he's going to start Cade, Ivy, and Pontecchio. So I was impressed, though, with Monty. He, you know, started Muscala against the Clippers, but then he brought in Pontecchio, who had never even practiced with us. He'd watched film, but he put him in there, like, right away. Right, you know, minutes into the game, like five minutes into the first quarter, he stuck in Fontecchio. So that leads me to believe that he has confidence in him that maybe he he might start him. So I think he'll start them. And then Stu and Duran. And so he loves Stu. I think Stu's better coming off the bench. I like Stu, but um, I just think Monty, there was one game after Stu was injured that he came in and played off the bench instead of starting. There's only been, I think, one game all year that he was dressed and ready to play, available, that he didn't start. And so I just think Monty respects him a lot, and, and so I think that's what's going to happen. But I, my starting team would be Cade, Ivy, Fontecchio, and Duran. And then the wild card for me is I would probably start maybe a Sar, but Grimes is so good. And so you could start Grimes or or... Asar. The trick is again. I talked, alluded to this earlier about the guard situation. So if Cade Cade played like thirty five minutes, or and Ivy played like thirty six minutes last game. So if you reduce their minutes to each to thirty, you know, and played Sasser only twenty, then all of a sudden that's if you play just the two guard positions, that's sixteen minutes only left for Grimes, and he's one of our best players. So I just don't see they, they're going to have to play. Um, like Cade and Ivy and Grimes at the at, at, Cade at the small forward, and so he can guard. He's six six, so he can guard up, and Grimes can even guard up because he Grimes isn't as tall. Grimes is an all deep. You know, the people from New York thought he would be all defense if he was like an inch or two taller, because he's he's six four. I think they sometimes I've seen him listed as six five. But anyway, that's the challenge, and it's going to be hard for Monty. And then. Again, he just has to prioritize those eight young guys and, and get them minutes together and then, you know, just fill in around them. But we'll see how he does. But it's not going to be easy because then you're going to have guys like Shake Milton, who's been a good NBA player, or Malachi Flynn and, and Fournier, and they're going to be at practice every day. And then you're going to feel bad if you don't play them. But they, we just have to prioritize those guys. So anyway, you know, we won four of our last eight games. And I, I mentioned back early in December that, you know, come January, we were going to start winning more games and we were going to get better significantly. I, it's, in a, it's in a podcast, so you can hear me where I said that multiple times. But um, Pistons are 8-44. and 44. We're four of our last 10. We're four and six in our last 10 games. The Wizards are 9-43, and 43, and they're 2-8 and eight 
and they lost six in a row, and the Wizards are going to be tanking. So they're, they're, they don't have, they have Koulibaly, and they, but they don't have a bunch of young guys like we do. So they're going to be really trying to tank and get young players. And they got rid of Gafford. They traded away for a first-round pick, and he's a really good player. But, you know, so their team, you know, i surprised they didn't trade Kuzma because uh, they're they're rebuilding. But anyway, I, I'm really confident that we are going to pass the Wizards. And then there's the Spurs. They're 10-43, and 43, and they've lost. They, they're 2-8 and eight in their last 10 games, and they've lost seven in a row. And, you know, for all the respect that um, – Pop gets he he's a tanker. He was a tanker last year. He against Detroit. He they had those young guys and he sat out. Five of his best young guys all didn't play against Detroit. He didn't even call timeouts at crucial times at the end of the game that he would always have done before. But he didn't care about winning the game, and so they're they're going to be tanking even though they can't just try to lose because I know that'll make. Um, I know, know they want to keep Victor happy and Victor doesn't like losing. But they've been they've been they're ten and forty three. And so uh, the Hornets are 11 and 41. They are one and nine in their last 10 games. So, and they have the worst plus minus. They're minus 11.8 points per 100 possessions. So they're struggling. And then they traded away PJ Washington and they traded away Rozier and LaMelo's hurt. So they are definitely on the rebuild and they're going to tank. All these teams are going to tank. All the bottom teams, the bottom five or six teams are all going to tank except our Pistons. And, and I don't want them to tank. I want to get, I, I was sure there was no way as bad as we started that we weren't going to get one of the um, best odds. So the bottom three teams have over 14% chance of getting the first round pick. And so I, I thought we were for sure going to be one of those teams. But I now we might be, have the fourth or fifth worst record. It wouldn't shock me. Um, but it's still hard to leapfrog that many teams. But the Blazers are 15 and 37, and they've had a lot of injuries. They have some good players, though. You know, they have Jeremy Grant, who lit us up, and they have Scoot, who's been hurt, and um, Aiton, who didn't play against us, and they and Brogdon. I thought for sure they were going to trade Brogdon. So, this, like I said, this stuff just doesn't make sense. Some of the guys, teams were just not moving players. It was just weird for me. So, and then the Grizzlies are 18 and 35, and they're two and eight in their last 10 games and they've lost eight in a row. So I, you know, they've went out 18 already. So, but they have all those injuries and they, you know, they, they've been decimated by injury also. So if they try to tank, which it wouldn't shock me that they would try to tank for one year and get their guys healthy and get a job back, then they could be ready to roll again next year. Anyway, the Pistons just signed, um, Tosan and his last name starts with E V B U. O N. Anyway, it's a long name, but to a 10 day contract. So he was from played at Princeton. He was Ivy League Player of the Year. He's averaged 15 points for the Crews, and then he's you know we signed him. I don't think we drafted him. I think we signed him after at the right after the draft. We we signed him as a free agent. As in the, he just came out of college. So, but he um, the Grizzlies picked him up because they were so decimated. And they they signed him to a 10 day contract and had him play with them. But now we've got him for a 10 day contract. So. Um, we just cut that little guard, the guard from New York that we had picked up and he has a hard name to pronounce too. So I'm not going to say it, but interesting that, um, Jay Nivey last 26 games that he, he started, he's averaged about 24 points, 4.8 rebounds, 4.6 assists, shooting 47% from the floor, 42% on threes. I mean, he's been on fire from three lately, and he, he's all the way up to 37% for the whole year. If you take, you know, he's had some bad stretches. He started out pretty good, and then he struggled for a while, and then he, but he started to go again, and then lately he's been, you know, he had that game where he, made, he had 12 threes made in a row, which is the third most threes in a row. Somebody made 14, and uh, several guys made 13 in a row, and a, a bunch of guys made 12 in a row. And one of the guys was um, Shake Milton that signed our team. He made 12 or 13 in a row. So, and but he's not been that consistent of a three point shooter this year. So, but Ivy, you know, has been was sensational, and I'm glad we didn't trade him. Paul George said he loves Cade's game, and he's going to be a problem for many years. He said, and so that that was really cool. And you know, the I I had mentioned in the last podcast that uh, I had never remember seeing a team get zero offensive rebounds. Well, it has happened five times since 1973. That's the year I graduated from high school. 
but he is held. And that's the first year they started keeping track of offensive rebounds. So only five times has it happened. And you know, there's millions of games that are being played every year. So anyway, um, after the game, Paul George also, he's always spoke real highly. Last year, I remember him speaking highly about Jalen Duran. And he has a podcast, but he uh, gave Jalen um, his jersey after the game. I saw that. That was pretty cool. So but there's lots of things that happen, you know, with players. Um, there's lots of ups and downs. So, like, players that weren't playing good, like, you know, Kaminga, he was in trade talks, trade rumors, and Wiggins was in trade rumors. And then all of a sudden they started playing better. And Wig and Kaminga has been their second best player. So, the story, so Steve Kerr wouldn't play Kaminga. Really spotty. He he played him up and down. He'd play sometimes, sometimes not hardly any. Kind of like Ivy, and then what Monty did with Ivy. But then he was starting Kaminga, and Kaminga had a, was having a great game. And then in the fourth quarter, he didn't put him back in. And so then Kaminga spoke out to the press and said, "I'm I'm not happy with the way that Steve Kerr's, you know, treating me or whatever. I don't know how he worded it, but um, after that, they had a meeting." And then he played the most minutes on the team. And now for the last like two weeks, Kaminga's played like an all-star. He's averaged like 24 a game. He's their second best player next to stuff. And so they, their teams kind of turn things around. So it's just fascinating to me, you know, with how these players, you know, they're playing bad a little bit and then people get down on them. And then all of a sudden they start getting high on them. They start playing better. And then all of a sudden they don't want to trade them. And same thing even happened with Dejounte Murray. He's, he's played really great lately. So, uh, book night is available for buyout and, and buyout, but I, you know, Pistons were interested in him at one time, I think maybe in the draft, but he's really erratic shooter in person. And so I, I wouldn't worry about trying to get him, but, um, uh, Miles Bridges, he had a chance to veto any trade because he had signed a one year contract. I don't know. There's just lots of different rules in the NBA. So now they're saying that the Hornets want to resign him as a free agent and, He's been really putting on a show lately. He had 41 one game, and he had 45 another game, and so he's been playing good. So it doesn't look like he might end up being available, even though he will be a free agent. So anyway, I want to thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you subscribe. It really would mean a lot to me if you would subscribe. Be the reason that somebody feels cared for and loved, and go Pistons.